Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friends in Fiction, four New York Times bestselling authors, Endless Stories. I am Christy Woodson Harvey. And I am Patty Callahan Henry. And on behalf of me and Christy and Mary Kay Andrews and Kristen Harmel, we are so excited to welcome you to a special episode of Friends in Fiction Behind the Book, a quicker, deep dive into the life and work of one of our favorite authors. And today, we are thrilled to welcome our friend, Rachel Linden. Rachel's taste for adventure and interest in people first led her to a career as an international worker with a faith-based aid organization. And her experiences living and traveling in more than 50 countries around the globe continue to provide excellent grist for her stories. She loves writing novels that combine so many of her favorite things, strong women facing big challenges, food, travel, and second chances at love. Rachel enjoys crafting bittersweet stories of struggles and triumphs infused with a touch of magical realism and with ultimately happy or at least hopeful endings. This is our week of magical realism because the recipes for a charmed life and magic all around. Yes. Oh, been, yes. Yeah. We interviewed, so, yes, we interviewed about that book. Yeah. yeah, she's great. So currently Rachel lives with her husband and children on this sweet little yeah. island near Seattle. And the first time Rachel and I met in person or the second time mm -hmm. she came to visit me and um, I was with my daughter on Friday Harbor, which is out there too. And I just fell in love with the area. You are so lucky to live out there. Aww. But when she's not dreaming up a new story, she enjoys camping with her family in their pop-up top camper van, which I don't think I'd enjoy, but I'm still friends with Rachel. <laughs> exploring, exploring, <laughs> Exploring the beauty of the on you. So I've heard exploring <laughs> the beauty of the Pacific Northwest, eating sushi, and having grand adventures in far flung places. I think I would like the pop up camper top. Like if I was going to camp, I think I would like to camp in that way. I it's just adorable. Okay. It's very charming. It feels like you're in a book when you're in it because it's so cute. Yeah. Uh, Patty, you know, I'm interrupting this. You know that half this book is set on San Juan Island in Friday Harbor. The other half. I do. That's why I, I mentioned it. I, I do. Know. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, Rachel, we're so excited to have you here today. Now, I read Recipe for a Charmed Life a really long time ago because I was fortunate mm -hmm. enough to get to blurb this book. And so I, I loved the book and I had to look back because I wanted to tell everybody what I said about it because I loved it so much. So <laughs> here's what I said. Rachel Linden, like the characters she breathes into existence, has a special knack for creating a sense of wonder and a spark of joy. In her latest novel, she beautifully shows how people and dreams can change, often in the very best ways, and that finding passion just might be what this journey is all about. With humor, heart, and Linden's signature pinch of magic, recipe for a charmed life in chance. So suffice it to say, I loved the book, and that's what I had to say about it. But can you tell our listeners and viewers out there a little bit more about Recipe for a Charmed Life. Yes, I would love to. So Recipe for a Charmed Life is the story of Georgia Mae Jackson, who's an American chef in Paris. And in one night, she loses her sous chef position, her cheating French boyfriend, who she shuts in a refrigerator, a walk-in refrigerator. Mm -hmm. That was a I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her sense of taste. She wakes up the next morning and everything is bitter. And her estranged mother, who's living on this little tiny remote island and San, um, on San Juan Island, reaches out to her and says, hey, there's something you need to know about our family. Please come. So Georgia May goes to San Juan Island, where she's never been before, to reconnect the mother she had with the mother she hasn't seen since she was five and try to regain her spark in the kitchen. And there's also a love interest who is a grouchy oysterman in oh, I chest, love it. High rubber, chest high rubber, like international distress orange overalls. Grundens. We, they, we are very familiar with the Grunden world in my household. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, I do not have them, fortunately, but my husband and son wear them very often. There you go. It's a hottie in Grundens, basically. That's right. I, I actually have pictures of little Will on Christmas morning, like wearing a new pair of Grundens with like nothing under them. There, it's just hilarious. I'm like, one day at his like rehearsal dinner, I'm gonna pull this. That's out. gonna pop mm -hmm. back up. That'll yeah. be the that'll be the winning photo. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's probably no better place to set a magical story than on these San Juan Islands. I was. So enchanted. I spent a couple of weeks there and went to that oyster place that's there. So I love that you have an oyster man. But can you tell us about the origin of this book? What was the spark that made you say, this is my next book. This is what I'm going to write about. Or was it even that simple? Part, part of the spark was putting in Paris. I hadn't been to Paris for a while. I was sort of longing to be traveling. And I thought, you know, 
I think I have this new plan to just set books in places I want to go for research. And so far that is proving to be very effective. So I got to go to Paris to research this book. And basically all I did was walk around all the places that Georgia goes and then eat a lot of macarons. That was the research. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Patty, you do the hard work as a historical fiction writer of deep dives into things. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to wander around and eat macarons and call it research. I'll pick that next time. That sounds better. <laughs> so that was part of it. And then um, the other part was, this is really at its heart, a mother daughter love story. And it's about the complexities oh of mothers and daughters. And it's about forgiveness and about how we forgive people we love when they hurt us deeply. And so that intrigued me as well. I hadn't done, I tend to have dead mothers. Like mm -hmm. my mom hasn't caught on to the fact that lots of my mothers in these books are dead, but I was like, I don't want to do a dead mom. I want to do a complex mother daughter relationship because I think they're almost always complex, even when we love our moms or when we love our daughters and I'm a mother mm -hmm. and a daughter of a daughter. And um, so that's what it is. So it's a mother daughter love story set in two adorable places. I love. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I love it. What, what could be better than that? I think we can go now. <laughs> All right, everyone. We have to ask about the food. You have to ask about the food. Yeah. Um, so often, Rachel, pieces of our own life experiences make our way into these novels in ways that maybe we don't recognize, or maybe we do, or like that thing where you didn't notice it, and then you're reading the book and you're like, wait, oh, did I just like uncover something here? So were there yeah. any parts of your own life story that sort of surreptitiously or not surreptitiously made their way into this book? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally the mother daughter thing. And I, yeah, I had written the book. I'd spent like, you know, nine months on the book and I was doing laundry one day and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like therapy. I've been working out my own relationship with my mom. So I called a writer. Oh my gosh. I know. It's like, um, I feel really dumb for this, but like, I just wrote a book about my mom and I, and of course my mother is not the mother in this story. We deal with different things, but it is about this, like, how do you love, how do you choose relationship with someone who you adore, who also kind of drives you crazy and vice versa. And, um, and so I called this friend and I was like, I, am I even qualified to write a story if I have spent nine months and I just figured out I'm writing about myself and she's okay, like, Oh, we all do it, honey. We all do it. Don't even worry. So um, yeah, so <laughs> that, yes, there are pieces of me in this, particularly in the relational thing, you know, families are complicated and um, messy and sometimes drive you nuts and you love them. And that is a, at the heart of it. That's what this is about. I, I think that we all, I always say we only have our own compost pile to work with. So mm -hmm. we, we can't write about things. Well, we can, but it doesn't come out very well. We write about what we care about. We write about the unanswered questions. We write about relationships and love. Um, but I want to talk about food. So you said your research was to walk around and eat macarons, which I would like to do with you. Thank you very much. Um, you also have an oysterman. And I've been to those oyster places on Friday Harbor. And oh, my gosh, you and I had a nice cold glass of champagne on Friday Harbor while eating oysters. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the food and, and the way it works in this novel. She's a chef. She's a chef. Uh, she's a chef who's lost her sense of taste. All she can taste is bitter because that is what her life has become. Mm. And so it is about, against the backdrop of this unique little island, she's rediscovering the joy in life, the savor in life as she goes along, kind of unlocking what she really wants in life, unlocking her own desires. And so there's all kinds of food in here. You know how there, um, a lot of bookstagrammers are putting trigger warnings in reviews, which I feel so, I, I love that because I think it's so helpful. Uh, so this book is getting trigger warnings for hunger. So many people are like, don't eat this. Don't read this book on an empty stomach. You need to have snacks at hand. You need to have like macarons. Somebody told me they'd gone out and bought macarons before they started reading it. So I may have gone overboard because this is actually getting trigger warnings. That's like I was I was not, just by the way, I was not laughing at people putting trigger warnings on the review. I like laughed in the wrong, I was laughing because I was like, what in the world? Like I knew where that was going before you said it. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. So it's, there's just lots of delicious food. And I come from an Italian family where food is the heart of everything. And so I just kept putting it in and then people liked it. And so I just kept putting more of it in and I just, I enjoy it. I think so much good stuff happens around the table and happens in the kitchen, um, particularly when you're cooking together. And so I loved this idea of a chef who's lost, lost the, the taste for life and needs to regain it again. I love that. Awesome. Um, Okay, so you know we have a lot of writers in this world, including us. Do you have a tip that you could share with us? 
little writing tip that makes your book so magical and delicious? Oh, okay. Uh, I just write what I like to read. And I, I have a pet peeve. Here's my tip. I have a okay. pet peeve with main characters who are passive. I don't like mm -hmm. women who let lots of things happen to them and mm -hmm. don't take agency in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So a few books ago, I had this kind of passive main character and I didn't like her. And I thought, what if she just said yes? Instead of holding back, what if she just went for it? Mm -hmm. And so uh, with Georgia, she gets herself in trouble. Like she puts her cheating ex-boyfriend in a refrigerator that's and that's good. not the last thing that she does. And so I, um, I just like to, I like to have characters say yes to things and see where it takes them. So that would be my tip. Don't let things happen to your characters. Let them enact upon their environment and see what in the world transpires because it's really a lot more fun. That's great. I mean, that's fantastic. It's another way of saying, get your character in trouble and see how they get out of it. Yeah. Because right? mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. we love like, that. Mm -hmm. I think it was Kristen Hanna who said, I put them in a tree and keep throwing things at them. And they can't yes. to see how they get down out of the tree. And yep. it's true. Like this happens and then this happens. What metal are they going to bring to the surface? That's where the story is. How do they change? Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm, I bet I'll think about that when I'm sitting down and writing again. Can yep. you give us any sneak peeks as to what you're working on right now? Oh, yes. Please? Okay. Yes. Follow. So I turn it in on Friday, actually. It's due Yay! in. <laughs> Oh my so gosh. So you're out book. promoting a book while you're editing a book, but I've never oh. done that before. I know I'm working on three books at the same time right now, which I I'm having trouble keeping the monster. I'm like, wait, what part of the world are we in? So this one is set in Italy. It is called the secret of orange blossom cake. It comes out next year and it's three generations of women on an olive farm in Italy and a magical cookbook and a lost recipe. And it's really Ooh, oh, that sounds so good. So Thank good. You. Okay. Well, Rachel, our audience is going to want to keep up with you to be able to hear more about that and just follow along with you. So can you tell us where they can find you online? Yes, I am on YouTube. Or, I'm sorry. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I do not do TikTok because I'm kind of a Luddite and I feel old and I can't do dance videos. So, mm -hmm. um, me either. True. Yeah. So Facebook, Facebook, it's just Rachel Linden. They can find me and um, Instagram at, I think it's author Rachel Linden. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest today. Aww. And all of you out there, don't forget to tune in every Wednesday night here on Facebook or YouTube for brand new longer form content about the books, authors, and the reading and writing worlds that we love. You can find everything about the Friends of Fiction universe from the live show to the podcast, the newsletter to events, information about how to purchase our guest books to updates from the Friends of Fiction official book club on our website, friendsandfiction.com. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye.